What's up, y'all? Welcome to Deadball TV. Today, I got a pretty quick and casual video for y'all about my thoughts on the rumors that Chicharito could be returning to the Mexican national team. And I'm not pulling this topic out of thin air. You know, it's not like it was a slow week at the office over here at DBTV. There have been multiple reports from Mexico saying that Javier Hernandez could make a return to the national team against the United States. I'm not 100% sure if that's referring to the upcoming friendly we have against the United States outside of an official FIFA window where it will be an entirely Liga Mekis based squad. But for the purpose of this video, I honestly don't think it matters. All I'm gonna do in this video is give my opinion on this possible return for Mexico's all-time leading goal scorer and read y'all some facts. That's it. We're going to keep it cool, casual, quick. Let's get into it. If you want to see more videos about the Mexican national team in English, I highly encourage you to hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss any future content like this. So am I in favor of Chicharito returning to the national team? Yes, I am. That might shock some of y'all, and I've seen a large portion of the fan base laughing at the idea of Javier Hernandez returning, and I don't really understand why. Maybe you guys can help me understand why in the comments if you're somebody that feels like this would be a terrible idea. In fact, I'm gonna start by arguing against myself. What is the case against Chicharito returning? The first reason that I'm seeing online is he's old. He's 34 years old. Now, that is an objective fact. There's nothing I can argue against that. I'm not gonna be like, actually, he's 27. No, I mean, the man's 34 years old. That's a reality. But does age alone mean that he has no utility to the Mexican national team? No. I feel like the fan base is taking to this news worse than they normally would because we already have a situation where we have Memo Ochoa, you know, who's in his late 30s at this point, still is the number one keeper for the national team. We still have guys like Hector Moreno in the starting center back position next to Cesar Montes. And so I feel like there's this ageism right now that is bubbling over because we feel like we need to immediately introduce all these new young guys and like the new generation has to come in. Everybody was a starter under Tata over the age of 27, like kick him to the curb. They're too old. And my viewpoint on this is very simple. If the man can play, and not just Chicharito, any player, if he can play and he's better than the options that exist in the Mexican national team pool, I don't care if he's 45. I think we're overrating age a little bit, guys. Just like I think some people are overrating the fact that Coca's an Argentine. Like, that's something that's being held against him. Again, I don't give a damn. Where are you? Let's get a freaking Senegalese manager in here. I do not care. Can you get results with Mexico? Yes? Then you can be born wherever, bro. Doesn't matter to me. Can you score goals for the Mexican national team? Chicharito being the all-time leading goal scorer, I would say yes. I would say he has a strong body of work to suggest that he can get the job done. The second argument that I see against Chicha returning is that he plays in the MLS and that he's playing at a low level. Now, I am not a simp for the MLS. I'm not even a fan of the MLS, but to say that Liga Mekis is miles clear of MLS is a false statement. Look no further than MLS winning the CONCACAF Champions League for the first time ever last year. The strikers from Mexico who are getting game time, who are getting call-ups, one plays in the Eredivisie, one plays in the Premier League, and the other two playing Liga Mekis. Thus, it is fair to compare the MLS to Liga Mekis. And honestly, I don't think there's enough of a gap in performance and difficulty and skill level, whatever, between the two leagues for you to be able to discredit what Chicharito is doing for the LA Galaxy. To me, when I see these points, you just sound like you're an MLS hater. And I get it. It's hilarious to hate on the MLS. It's super fun. It's easy. But you have to also be in touch with reality. And that is Liga Mekis, if it is still better than MLS, is not by much. So I'm not going to look at the 18 goals that Javier Hernandez had last season and turn my nose up at it. The third case against him that I'm seeing is he's in Injured. Okay, well, if he's injured, then he he won't get called up. It, this isn't even an argument, guys. What? If a player is injured, he will not be called up to the national team. Y'all are acting like he's going to have a pulled hammy and still be in the starting lineup against the U.S. Like, that's, that's not how this works. Yeah, it's annoying that he always seems to be dealing with a small injury. But again, if he can still play and he can still score goals, I don't care that he has a recurring big toe injury. And the last argument I've seen against it is that he'll be 37 or 38 at the next World Cup. And I'm with y'all. I don't want Mexico's starting striker to be a 38-year-old at a home World Cup. I think that would be bad. But if y'all forgotten about the 2023 Nations League, the next Gold Cup, the 2024 Copa America, the 2023 five gold cup i don't know about y'all but i want to win these tournaments and i don't give a damn if the leading goal scorer for mexico in these tournaments is a 35 36 year old javier hernandez if he can even help mexico win two of those tournaments why would you be against that idea and i'll also say if santi jimenez can't lock down that starting nine position by 2026 then something in his career development has gone seriously seriously wrong the only situation in which i would be against chicharito being called up is if he took 
all the minutes away from Santi Jimenez and thus stunted his development with the national team. If Coca was like, yo, Chicha, I'm going to give you all 90 minutes in every single game of my reign as Mexican manager, then I would be upset. But that's not going to happen because the public outcry would be crazy. Chicharito can't play a full 90 multiple games in the same week, you know, a situation that we deal with with a tournament or, a, or an international window. And Santi Jimenez is too good to let that happen. Thus, the worst case scenario, in my opinion, which is Santi not getting minutes because of Chicharito's reintroduction to the national team, is extremely unlikely. Now, the main reason I want Chicharito to come back is very simple. He's Mexico's all-time leading goal scorer. The disrespect that I have seen towards this man on street interviews, tweets, TikToks, podcasts, is honestly embarrassing. Please comment a country that treats their all-time leading goal scorer with as much disgust and disdain as we treat Chicharito. I'll wait. Don't tell me a man that has goals against France, Portugal, Serbia, Brazil. Don't tell me that he can't come in and make a difference. My second biggest reason is something that we all know. The depth at the nine in Mexico is insanely weak. Let's go one by one with Mexico's recent nines and let's compare them to Chicharito. I'm not gonna do this with Santi Jimenez because I would never want Santi Jimenez to lose his spot. So Santi, he's in the team. For me, Chicha is also in the team. Now let's go to the remaining three players. First up, Funes Mori. Now it's true, Funes Mori has 37 goals in Liga Mekis over the last two and a half seasons, which is great. The only problem is he has six goals for the national team, almost all of which have come against El Salvador, Honduras, and Iraq. You could put a gun to my head and I genuinely could not recall a game in which I turned off the TV and I said, damn, did you see Funes Mori? He was cooking tonight. It's literally never happened. Next, we got Henry Martin. Now, Henry Martin is an absolute animal in Liga Mekis. But here's the thing. For Mexico, I've never, ever seen a truly dominant Henry Martin performance. This man, much like Funes Mori, he loves a goal against Guatemala. He loves a goal against Panama. He loves a goal against CONCACAF teams. He has one goal against non-CONCACAF competition, and that is a tap-in against Saudi Arabia at the World Cup that I could have scored. Your mother, and by the way, send her this video. I think she'll enjoy it, and hopefully she'll agree with a lot of the points I'm making. She could have scored that tap-in. And are we going to forget the opportunities that the man missed against Saudi Arabia? Yeah, he's got 46 goals in the last three seasons in Liga Mekis. That's incredible. You know what I say to that? Give him the MVP. Put him in the team of the season for Liga Mekis. But we ain't talking about Liga Mekis. We're talking about the Mexican national team. And for the national team, he's got seven goals in 29 games and has never really looked comfortable. I know we're not actually talking in real life, but I would like you to pause the video and look me in the eyes and tell me that Henry Martin and Funes Mori instill more confidence, more belief in you than Chicharito, Mexico's all-time leading goal scorer. All right, do it right now. I'm not going to move. And lastly, we have Raul Jimenez. Guys, do you know how many goals Raul Jimenez has in the last year for Mexico? Go ahead. I'll give you a second to think about it. He has zero goals for Mexico in the last year. Guys, do you know when the last non-penalty goal Raul Jimenez scored for the national team was? It was November of 2020. I remember it fondly because you guys know if you watch other videos on the channel that I'm a big Asian football fan and I was very hype because Mexico was traveling to Asia to play Korea and Japan and got two dubs, by the way. Ain't no way we're getting two dubs today with this current team. I'm telling you that now. But regardless, since then, Raul Jimenez has three goals for Mexico. And those three goals include two penalties against El Salvador and one penalty against Panama. You really can't make these things up. And I'm gonna conclude everything now. Guys, I do not think that Javier Hernandez is a world-class striker. I do not think he's going to come in and score every single game for Mexico. I don't think he's gonna lead Mexico to, you know, the finals of the Copa America. I don't think that. What I do think is that we have one extremely promising yet raw prospect at the striker position, and his name is Santi Jimenez. Outside of that, we really don't have any viable options. We do not have a single option who has consistently performed for the Mexican national team. I do not care what is happening in domestic play. 
that is an entirely different brand of football and an entirely different set of circumstances. We can give Funes Mori, we can give Henry Martin their flowers and Liga Mekis all day every day, and, and I'll be one of those people. But I'm not saying that Chicharito should sign with America. I am saying that he could be a positive difference for the national team. Even if he comes back as an impact sub and scores some important goals and important games, that's all I'm expecting. And I don't want to get too intangible, but I also think it's important for Santi Jimenez, who's going to be carrying the torch for us for the next 10 years, I think it's important for him to get some reps with Mexico's scoring goat. We shouldn't undervalue the lessons that he can teach Santi along the way. He might even be able to teach him how to throw a really good party, but that's the subject of another video. That's Deadball TV After Hours. We're not going to talk about that now. You guys let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Like I said, I don't really see anything bad happening from this. I think Mexico has nothing to lose. We can't score goals anyways. We might as well get in our best scorer of all time back in the squad while he still has a few years left. That's how I feel. Leave a like and leave your comments down below. Hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.